Good morning. So it is Tuesday, week two of semester two, and today we're learning a technique called Jackson Cross Cylinder, which essentially is a way of measuring astigmatism on the phoropter. I'm waiting for the train right now, and it usually takes me about an hour to get into uni and then an hour to get back. So within that period of time is when I do most of my Yankee. Um, I find if I've got an allotted amount of time where I have to do it, I will get it done. Whereas if I'm at home or if I'm just watching lectures and I've, uh, I've got other things to do, it's really hard to motivate myself to get those cards done. A lot of people do random mindless tasks like washing or exercising, which is also good, but I have a phone that I do it on, so I, I, it's difficult for me to sort of do that when I don't have my hands free. But yeah, so I'll, I'll see you guys at uni. Okay, just finished up with today. It is almost seven o'clock and I'm on my way home. Jackson Cross Sill, the instructions were super complicated on the page, but then as soon as we did, it was actually super simple, super easy, super fine. We had a free practice session where we practiced whatever skills we've been learning in the past, because you don't just learn a skill and have a specific time to be able to practice it. You learn the skills and as you go on, you learn more and more and more and more skills. And you've got these dedicated free practice sessions where you can go in and just practice the skills of your choice. And that is very useful. We had more practice sessions last semester. Now this semester we've got less practice sessions and more actual sessions where we learn skills, which means it's a little bit more hectic, a little bit more intense. But yeah, so I'm on my way home now, and then I'm gonna do what little anki I have remaining and sleep, I reckon. <laughs> Good afternoon. Melbourne has just gone into an extended lockdown, an additional two weeks. Uh, but as we are an essential uni course that requires learning in person, we're still going in. So uh, on my way to another practice. with just 
the plethora of equipment that optometrists have, I don't think you'd be the only one. In fact, I was pretty surprised that optometrists use all these things to look inside and assess the health of your eye before I sort of fell in love with optometry. I mean, I think optometry has a real, real big problem of educating the public on what it actually does. I mean, I know plenty of people who have never had an eye test in their life, and the, the sort of, the recommended is once every two years. Whereas you have a dental cleaning every, every year or two. And it's just something that happens. I mean, imagine growing up never having had uh, a dental routine checkup. And then one day coming in and being like, oh yeah, maybe I've got a cavity here, I need to fill in more. Or, oh yeah, I'm starting to develop gingivitis. Very much the same thing with optometry. In fact, I had no idea that I was far-sighted until I started the course, because when I started the course is when I had my first eye test. And uh, turns out all the, those headaches and eye strain I've been having at night is actually due to something. And you never want to put it off too late, have an eye test and realise, ah, I might be developing glaucoma, or I might, you know, have something wrong. For most of us, we'll be fine, which is good. But for those that are not, the optometrist has all of these sort of tools at their disposal to help assess the health of your eye and help make sure they get the correct diagnosis. Uh, I think not many people know that in optometry, you do have a very medical aspect of making diagnoses and treating conditions of the eye, which is one thing that I came to really appreciate, or I'm rather coming to really appreciate about optometry. And I think optometry needs to do a better job of letting people know that it's also a very important part of what it does. It doesn't just deal with glasses and contact lenses. Maybe it did many, many years ago, but um, optometrists are no longer optical dispensers. Optometrists are primary healthcare sort of clinicians of the eye. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you want a little bit more in-depth videos on specifically each piece and what they do and how an optometrist will use it to assess your eye, just let me know, because it's actually really interesting. There's a lot of physics behind all of this stuff. And I think it's really cool. I hope you guys do too. In that case, I'm looking forward to learning about how to use all these things and developing the skills to do it. And I'm hoping to take you guys along with me because I don't think enough people know about what optometry actually is. Jesus. I can't see. <laughs>